Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the Shapiro-Wilk test of normality to test the normality of a dependent variable across all the levels of an independent variable. So I have fictitious data loaded here in the data editor in SPSS. I have an ID variable. And there's 120 records in this data set. I have a treatment variable, and this is the independent variable in this case. And there are three levels, Gestalt therapy, rational emotive behavior therapy, and existential therapy. So three levels of one independent variable. And then I have one dependent variable named depression. And this is recorded at the continuous level. So if I want to determine if there are any differences between these three levels of the independent variable, these three treatments, I would want to conduct an ANOVA. And in order to do that, I would need to test the normality of the dependent variable across all the levels of the independent variable. And I can do that in part by using the Shapiro-Wilk test. The method that I'll be using will be displaying the results of the Shapiro-Wilk test for all three levels of the independent variable in one table. If you want the test broken out into separate tables, you can use the split file feature to do that, and I have a separate video that covers that. So first, I want to test the dependent variable depression for normality without regard to the independent variable treatment. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. This is what the Explore dialog looks like by default. I'm going to move depression over to the dependent list, but I'm not yet going to move treatment over to the factor list. Under Statistics, by default, Descriptives is checked off. I'm going to add Outliers. Continue. Then Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, but I am going to check off Histogram. And I'm going to check off Normality Plots with Tests. This will provide us with the Shapiro-Wilk results and another test on normality called the Kolmogorov smirnov test. Click Continue. No changes under Options. So from here, I'm going to click OK. And we can see we have 120 records, no missing values. And we have the descriptives for the variable depression. Now, part of de determining normality, we'll be taking a look at the Shapiro-Wilk test, but I also want to consider other information that's available. A determination of whether a variable is normally distributed or not normally distributed should not be made based on one test alone, but rather multiple sources of information. So I'm going to first take a look at skewness. And you can see here the skewness value for this variable is negative 0.086, and the standard error 0.221, and their kurtosis negative 0.234, and the standard error 0.438. Now there are a variety of guidelines for what skewness and kurtosis levels are acceptable when you're evaluating the normality of a distribution. One popular guideline indicates that the absolute value of the skewness statistic cannot exceed 1, and the absolute value of the kurtosis statistic cannot exceed 2. Another popular guideline uses the standard error provided here in this table. And you can see for skewness, the standard error is 0.221. If you double that value, that would be 0.442. And then you compare it to the absolute value of the skewness statistic. The absolute value of the skewness, skewness statistic should not exceed the standard error times 2. And the same guideline could be applied to the kurtosis statistic. If I were to multiply 0.438, by 2, I would have 0.876, and the absolute value of the kurtosis is 0.234. So both of these values check out in terms of normality. We have the extreme values table next, and then we have the test of normality. And you can see it's just for the variable depression, not broken out by the levels of the independent variable. And we have the Kolmogorov Smirnov test and the Shapiro Wilk. I'll be interpreting the Shapiro Wilk. The Shapiro Wilk tests the null hypothesis 
that in this case the, the scores in the variable depression come from a normal distribution. So with a non-statistically significant result like we have here, 0 0.781 is greater than 0 0.05, we would assume the data in the depression variable are normally distributed. If this value were below 0 0.05, we would assume that the data are not normally distributed. So if we're looking for a normal distribution, we have found it here based on the Shapiro-Wilk and based on the skewness and kurtosis. So let's move on and take a look at the histogram. So this is just a visual inspection. If you take a look, this is more or less the bell curve. So we would assume uh, from the histogram that we have a normal distribution. On the QQ plot, we want these points to be as close to the line as possible or on the line. And you can see that in every case here, the points are either on or close to the line. So based on this, we would assume we have a normal distribution. And then looking at the box plot, we're really just looking for outliers here, and there are no outliers on this box plot. So based on the Shapiro-Wilk and other sources, we would say that the scores in the depression variable are normally distributed, but what about across the levels of the independent variable? So I'm going to go back to Analyze and Descriptive Statistics and Explore. I'm just going to add treatment to the factor list it'll retain all the other changes I made in the Explorer dialog. I'll click OK. And here you can see we have a sample of 40 for each of the levels of the independent variable. And now we'll be taking a look at the dependent variable depression across Gestalt, RBT, and Existential. So we're going to look at the skewness and kurtosis values for all three of the levels of the independent variable. And you can see here with the values negative 0 0.085, negative 0 0.276, 0 0.148, 0 0.018 for REBT, and then negative 0.342 and negative 0.031. All these skewness and kurtosis values point toward normality based on the guidelines I mentioned earlier. We have the extreme values, but now broken down by treatment. And then we have the test or normality. And you can see again we have the KS test and Shapiro-Wilk. And we're going to be interpreting Shapiro-Wilk. So we're looking at depression across the three levels of the independent variable. 0.816 for Gestalt, 0.903 for RBT, and 0.343 for existential. So in all three cases we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and assume that the data are normally distributed across all three levels of the independent variable treatment. But of course we still want to take a look at the other sources. Uh, the histogram is next and we can see that this is generally normally distributed for Gestalt it appears to be. For REBT same thing and for existential we appear to have a normal distribution. The QQ plots for Gestalt we can see the points are near or on the line in every case. For REBT, that's mostly the case. We have a few here that deviate a bit and one down here that deviates a bit. And then for existential, uh, we have a few at the bottom here that deviate a bit, but the others are on or close to the line. And then moving down to the box plots, we can see for Gestalt, REBT, and existential, there are no outliers. So based on these results, we would assume that the scores in the depression variable are normally distributed across all three levels of the independent variable. I hope you found this video on using the Shapiro-Wilk test in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.